high-pitched voice like that, and I sound squeaky. Career over. I don't know. In America, my career could go up amongst progressives. If I had a squeaky voice, they may like me more. They may think I'm friendlier. I don't know. You, you never... I was thinking about voices, how amazing voices are. I'm blessed with a great voice. But it's a blessing. I remember when I was a pubescent kid, adolescent, just becoming, you know, that whole thing with the the hair and the beard and all. My voice was changing. And, I, you know, as a kid, you have a kid voice. Like, you sound like Johnny Philip Morris. Call for Philip Morris. You know, high-pitched. And then your voice changes. And I remember praying to God that he would give me a man's voice. My father had a great baritone voice like this. My son, God bless him, has a voice very similar. My son, when he used to live with us, would pick up the phone and they'd think it was me. Or I would pick it up. God forbid, I should tell you. I'd pick it up, they'd think it was him and the things I... Forget about that. The girls, the girls, the Swedish girls in the basement had to kick him out when he was. He reminded me recently. <laughs> He'd kill me if he heard me talk. He reminded me, he said, hey, Dad, do you remember when I moved back home at a certain point and I was living in your house and I had those two <laughs> Swedish girls over, and you came down and you screamed at me in the middle of the night. You look like Cato, Caitlin. Get out of my darn house and get your, you know what, out of here with you. Just get out. I, I said I don't remember that. <laughs> that was during the OJ phase. Cato, Caitlin, remember him? <laughs> he went on. Yeah, he went on. So it's snowing up in the Sierra. The snowpack's at 130 percent of normal. Jerry Brown doesn't know that yet. They haven't been able to get through to, through to Sacramento. He's busy studying the protocols of uh, global warming. 130%, all of the scream. They were screaming, oh, drought. We're all going to die in California. Oh, there's no rain. I said, hey, idiots, you live in a Mediterranean climate, moron. Most of you are from Cleveland or from the, from Brooklyn who run the country, uh, run California. I just hit the switch. I lost the CISPRO. That's good. I really don't have callers now. I swear to God. Oh, God, I have to go doing this during the... And uh, 130%, it's back, like, uh, unbelievable. But they're not mentioning it anymore. The reservoirs are going to be overflowing and the flooding. We should have some El Nino this February when we have the biggest, you know, February in the West Coast is when you get your heavy rains and snow. We're, we're already at 130% of the snowpack of the average. But old Jerry hasn't noticed that yet. It doesn't meet the protocols of global warm, warming. All right, give me a call, or I lost my call screen. Anyone will do. Go ahead on the Savage Nation. What's your name? Hey, WPNQ in Savannah, Georgia. Yes. And what is your uh, topic, please? I'm talking about uh, two favorite shows, actually. About a month ago, you uh, interviewed Donald Trump, and that was uh, very exciting to me to think that Donald would be listening to uh, someone as educated as yourself and uh, represents a lot of the feelings that a great many of the people in the country have and share i got a note from him yesterday a personal email and from his number one saying we'll be on your show very early in january so that's going to be very good to look forward to he is a wonderful man he is better than all of his detractors put together was that your favorite show of the year he spoke here at the hilton head south carolina where i live yes yesterday and had uh Ten times as many people attending the event as have uh, gone to hear other uh, uh, people in the race. What, what, you know, we talk about this, of why Trump will make such a great president. Uh, I talked about it last night with very intelligent people. They all had a different opinion as to why. I mean, I have my own opinion why. He doesn't, first of all, he doesn't mince words. Secondly, he loves America. What more do you need? An honest man who loves the country? After a dishonest psychopath who hates the country, I mean, it's the Alpha and the Omega. The question is, can he undo the millions of illegal aliens that this one is flooding America with? Can he deport them? Is there Are there enough airplanes and buses in the world to deport the illegals who don't belong here? That's what I want to know. Well, I'm sure he can make a dent in the uh, situation. And uh, Yes, I'm sure he'll stop it for sure, but I'm not worried about stopping it. I want it reversed. I want to see a thousand buses a day running south. I'd like to see a thousand UPS airliners running back to Syria a month. That's what I'd like to see to straighten this nation out. And they could take all of the lawyers from NYU with them while they're going. All of the screaming liberal lawyers can take a flight with them and go live with their wonderful friends over there in Mosul. I'm sending you a copy of Government Zero because unfortunately that's what we have back in a minute. 
Well, we're coming to the end of the uh, hour here in a couple of minutes, and I want to say goodbye to my listeners on WABC, goodbye to uh, WMAL, goodbye to uh, WJR. Until next year, that is. Uh, I'd love to be on for the third hour with you, but this is the way it is. Two hours in some markets, three hours in others. I don't uh, have any control over that. I know many of you would love me to be on for that extra hour because I'm on anyway. I'm live. ISIS supporter planned machete attack on New Year's Eve at Rochester Restaurant. Did you hear this little story? An alleged ISIS supporter who allegedly intended, alleged, allegedly, to commit an armed machete attack against people at a restaurant in Rochester on New Year's Eve was arrested. Emmanuel Luchman, an ex-con Muslim convert. There we go again. Something in common with all of these terror attacks, but we're not allowed to notice it. Let's see. Let's check. Ex-con. Not all of them become crazy. You want to kill innocent people. But, uh-oh, Muslim convert was charged with attempting to provide material support. New Year's is here soon. Do operations kill some kufr? The overseas ISIS contact instructed, according to court records. Seems to me there's something here to do with their religion. Well, I know it's not overwhelmingly the same religion. Just a, a few million have hijacked it, that's all. Lutchman was caught with the help of paid confidential FBI informants, NBC News reported. Knives against people inside the restaurant. That's what, quote, that's what my plan is. That's on my mind. That's all I've been thinking about. Because I'm getting amped up to accept the fact that's what i got to do. He told an informant he'd like to smuggle a bomb into a club or bar and kidnap a couple of people and kill them. He said, I will take a life. I don't have a problem with that, he allegedly said. New Year's Eve machete attack. And he got this from his religion. A Khan who became a Muslim in jail. You hear this? And they let them convert to Islam in prisons now. For years now, this has been going on. Put this poison in their brains. What do you expect to happen when you take criminals and convert them to a religion? And inside the holy book of the religion, they tell you to do things like this. They didn't write it as an addendum to the religion. I mean, let's be clear. I know you're shocked to hear it. How can he get away with telling you the truth on the radio in this day and age of total control of everyone's voice and their thoughts? How does he get away with telling you this? Emmanuel Lutchman planned the New Year's Eve machete attack on Rochester diners on behalf of ISIS. Part of I, I can't even read this. All I can say is thank God to whoever got this piece of garbage. You hear this? He has a criminal history dating back to 06, including a conviction for robbery and several mental hygiene problems. That I never heard before. What's a mental hygiene problem? Okay. Governor Cuomo held the arrest, an important reminder of the new normal of global terrorism. Well, he's right about that. That's the new normal. But, of course, if we had leadership, it wouldn't be the new normal. It would be a one-way ticket to uh, to, to uh, Krapistan, where he came from. Even if he was born here, I'd send him to Krapistan as punishment. If he's found guilty, send him, drop him in a parachute over ISIS's territory. Let him go join his friends. Oh, I have a lot of other things that I could do, but I'm nobody. I'm just a talk show host. That's all. Okay, God bless America. Have a great 2015, whatever's left of it. For the rest of you, I'll be here for another hour, for good, for bad, or for the worst. What's the worst thing Obama did in 15? What's the worst you fear for 2016? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. If you care to join the show and say you were on the Michael Savage show in the year 2015, the phone number is 855-407-282. I can't repeat the stories that I did in the first two hours. It'll get you sick. If you heard them already, you're already sick from him. Flooding America with work permits, illegal aliens, 100,000 H-1B visas, so the uh, pirates 
of Silicon Valley can take home more billions. What was your favorite moment for the Savage Nation this year? What do you want the Savage Nation to do next year? What was the worst story of the year? What do you fear Obama's going to do to this country in the coming year? That's really what's on the, everyone's mind. Mind. That's what on every, That's an interesting statement. I've always thought about it. That's what's on everyone's mind. If you say that's on everyone's minds, that would mean you have several minds. That's a tricky question, uh, English-wise. That is the question that's on everyone's mind. That also could be wrong. I mean, everyone together, plural, has one mind? Or is it everyone's minds? Is that the correct way? Is there an English teacher in the audience? It's actually, I think, it, that's, one, that's what, what is on everyone's minds. I think I'm fairly good on this, but, you know, this one is a perplexing one for an English uh, speaker. 855, how evil are you? No, let me read the headlines I picked for the day. Now, we got an age of terror. we got people stalking to kill with axes, knives, bombs. FBI is offering a $5,000 reward after Bacon founded Vegas Mosque. Way to go, FBI. Merkel warns Germans against refugee hate in New Year's speech. The enemy of the German people signals she'll use Germany's economic power to turn a record influx of refugees to the nation's advantage and urge citizens to reject social conflict fomented by nationalists with hate in their hearts. Now, I've told you nationalism is the only salvation for this nation. Now you understand what I mean by that. You understand who's flooding America. They're anti-American, anti-nationalist, internationalist, funded by George Soros. Their minds are poisoned against the very nation that gave them the power that they're using to destroy the nation. And she said that she will... Well, you know what she's going to do. She said she's going to attack anyone in Germany who opposes illegal immigration with all the power of the government. Merkel said it is important not to follow those who with coldness or even hate in their hearts want to claim Germanness solely for themselves and exclude others. That is such a perversion of the reality of what she's doing. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking that they're letting this happen in Germany. Obama's set to unveil curbs on gun sellers. Executive actions on gun control. I guess Jerry Seinfeld would approve of that, Larry David. Neurotic psychotics who are afraid of guns. See, guys like that would never have a gun in their house. They only have bodyguards who use guns. The reason they wouldn't have guns, in my opinion, is because they're on medication. They're afraid they'll use it on themselves in a moment of rage. Breitbart says that year 2015 was the year of anti-Christian jihad, where Christians are Allah's enemies. Wow. The year 2015 will go down in memory as a period of unprecedented Christian persecution throughout the world, resulting in thousands of deaths along with continuous targeted acts of violence and terror. Don't tell that to Angela Merkel. Don't tell that to Barry from Honolulu. Don't tell it to Seinfeld or Larry David, because they don't care. Targeted persecution now says that Christianity risks ceasing to be a truly global faith because of the exodus of believers from large swaths of the Middle East and Africa in an attempt to run away from violence perpetrated by Muslims. Larry, David, attention, Christians are fast disappearing from entire regions. Do you care about it, Larry? I know one of your shows that you did, Larry, you spit on a crucifix. I saw another story that appealed to me. Maybe this will be less anger-provoking. I'll try this one. From New York City to Harvard, the war on Asian success. New York Post. The year 2015 was a dismal one for American public education, at least by the numbers. But don't blame the kids. Parents are missing in action. Except most Asian American parents, that is. You see, Asian American parents tend to oversee their children's homework. They stress the importance of earning high grades. And they instill a belief that hard work is the ticket to a better life. And it pays off. Their children are soaring academically. But the outrage is that instead of embracing the example of these Asian families, school authorities and the non-Asian parents 
want to rig the system to hold them back. It's happening here in